Commissioner's Week winds down today for 2024, and our stop is Greenville, South Carolina, as we get to visit with Chris Colvin, who is the Commissioner for Conference Carolinas. It's a privilege, sir, to get to visit with you again. I, I mentioned that we have visited before here on uh, one of our channels, and the last time we had a chance to talk was May of 2020. And it doesn't take uh, anyone with a, a long memory, short memory, otherwise to know the college athletic landscape was a little bit different back then. It's it's uh, it's nice to be where we are right now. Can can you address that and talk about maybe the changes to where you are right now? Yeah, that, that's for sure. I mean, things things have have changed in the last uh, you know a little over four years. Um, you know, everything that happened with COVID just kind of blew up everything that we knew. Uh, about how to operate on a daily basis within college athletics. And we kind of had to come out of that. And so uh, certainly glad we're on the backside of that now. I, I am too. And I remember visiting with you at the time and I, I appreciated the way that you all were handling things and just addressing and, and being pretty aggressive with taking care of the members of the conference. And that was something specifically. I, I appreciated your role as commissioner then. You've been in the job now for five years. So it was, you know, right around just a, your first year and, and transitioning to second year of the job at the time. And you you took care of Conference Carolinas very well. And I just wanted to to say that. And in light of that then, how, how do you see your role as a commissioner? What do you see as the role of a commissioner? You know, I, I think the role of a commissioner is to, um, you know, provide some to steer and guide, um, you know, your, your members. But, but ultimately, I mean, let me back up a step from that. I, I, I see as my number one goal for myself and my staff is it is our job to help our institutions use intercollegiate athletics to fulfill their missions. And so each of them are using intercollegiate athletics in a potentially slightly different way. So we have to kind of work with all at this point now, 15 going on 16 institutions that, that, um, all may have slightly different goals and get them to work together, steering in the same direction. And, and really, and, and we're trying to provide opportunities and experiences for each of those institutions to then maximize how they can fulfill their missions through intercollegiate athletics. I think another thing that stands out to me for Conference Carolinas is um, it's one of the missions that you have that, that goes right along with that. And, and you talk about building champions in body, mind, and soul. Can you talk about that and really what that means for the conference and, and uh, how, how you all oversee that idea? Sure. I, you know, first and foremost, I, I think what, it, what we're trying to, to state there is that to, to correctly educate uh, a student it, it, it encompasses all of those aspects of one's identity. Um, our student athletes are our students. They are athletes. We're trying to train their body, train their mind. But but our, our conference acknowledges it, it, the faith based institutions and the non faith based institutions and their missions acknowledge that that we believe that there is an inherent spiritual side of life um, and that that needs to be well taken care of. And 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 we can't ignore that. And so we're, we're out on the forefront and saying that you know, we're going to focus on body, mind, and soul, you know, of our, if we look at the membership that, that we'll have for 24, 25 of 15 institutions, uh, we have uh, 13 of those are private, uh, 12 of those 13 are specifically faith-based institutions, um, but but even the, the private that's not a faith-based and our two public institutions fully embrace this philosophy and this mindset, um, and, and we take that into working on you know, sponsor, uh, uh, excuse me, sportsmanship. We, uh, we work, we, we, we make that a priority. We really work with our coaches to help educate them on what their role is in, um, in, in being a leader um, on their campus and in the conference uh, in the area of, of just how they treat officials, how we treat uh, each other, how they uh, interact with student athletes. And, but we're by far, by no means perfect anywhere near that. Uh, but we really do prioritize it and make sure that's an important component. We actually get together once a year with the chaplains of all of our institutions and they talk amongst themselves on how they can uh, share ideas and, and support each other. So um, it, it, it's uh, it, it's an important part of who we are, and it's at the core of who Conference Carolinas is. I understand. I appreciate that explanation. That that 
That's I and I appreciate the way that that you all are as as a conference are handling that. Uh, you mentioned fifteen members, of course, fourteen full time members today, but tomorrow that changes <laughs> as Shorter joins the ranks tomorrow, and then uh, one year from that, Ferrum will be joining. So it'll be sixteen. You know, when we were talking last time, you all were expanding your membership, and now. 15 uh, for the 24, 25 year and 16 for 25, 26. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. I, I think when we talked last, you know, we were, we were had essentially 11 member institutions. We had just added uh, or announced that we were going to add UNC Pembroke and Francis Marion uh, back in the, in the spring of, of 2020. Um, yeah. So July one is becoming a, um, an exciting day for the conference. We've had, uh, we'll have three, three years in a row here where, on July 1, we get the privilege of uh, officially welcoming in a new member. This past July 1 was Young Harris College. And then, uh, as you mentioned, tomorrow, Shorter. And then a year from now, uh, Ferrum College, who, of course, Ferrum uh, is still has to go through the uh, the Division II application process. But I, I have no concerns uh, about, about that for them. Um, but strategically for our conference, you know, we, we I would say, you know, working with our board, one of the goals of our board, kind of two parallel things going on here. One is the addition of football into Conference Carolina. So that will start for us in fall of 2025. When I started in, in 2019, you know, we, we had three institutions playing football, two more were about to add at the time. And essentially those five institutions back a couple of years ago were playing football in four different conferences as associate members. And so it was a goal of Conference Carolinas to bring those institutions together and, and play under one umbrella. Um, and so the addition of Shorter uh, allows us to, to get to six, which is kind of the minimum you need from an NCA standpoint to be able to do a conference. But six is not an ideal number to in, in the Division II landscape and scheduling, et cetera. Our goal really is to get to eight football institutions. And so um, as we have grown, we, we added UNC Pembroke, but but they didn't start football with us right away. They, of course, will when we start football. The addition of Shorter gets us to six. The addition of Ferrum gets us to seven. Uh, and we're still, we still would like to grow by at least one more football institution. The other piece that's going on with that for us is across the board with all of our institutions is the board set out some goals. And that was that we wanted to try to regionalize scheduling so that we could accomplish things such as reduce missed class time, uh, mm -hmm. reduce cost of travel and the promotion of regional rivalries. And so what we did, we, we launched this past year, uh, a pretty unique model in six of our sports uh, where we were in uh, three divisions. So it's not uncommon for a conference to split in divisions, but usually it's two. So we split into three divisions. And those three divisions best maximize the geographic layout of our conference. Mm -hmm. And we use some pretty creative scheduling models that really prioritize uh, competing uh, twice a year, home and home, against uh, all the teams that were within your division. And then depending on the sport and how many games are left in a conference schedule, uh, in some sports, you might have still played everyone else once. But in some other sports, you might have played some teams once and some teams not at all. Mm -hmm. And and so because of that, the, so the addition of shorter gets us to 15, which was a nice round number for in the case of three divisions of five institutions. Uh, but the goal of our board is to grow that to three divisions of six institutions. So kind of 18 is probably the high the high mark that we would we feel like a conference is eventually a the conference can get too big. We don't want it to get too big. And so we feel but we feel like 18 split into three divisions of six is is going to be optimal for us in the dynamic where we're also trying to grow football to, to approximately eight institutions. So uh, the addition of Shorter tomorrow helps us get there in football, although it's still a year away from actually starting football. It's just the dynamic of getting a football conference off the ground takes some time uh, and getting everyone aligned uh, there. But we're, we're on board for, for 25 for, for football. And then we're, we're thrilled about FARM going through the membership process and uh, applying to Division Two and becoming our 16th full member and our seventh football member uh, as we continue to try to achieve those goals uh, moving forward. Okay, so so the next conversation we have could be involving more 
expansion as you're talking about too. It's, it's <laughs> so good. It's it's possible. We, we believe we have uh, two spots left and we need one of those uh, to, to, to be playing football. And we're going to be as strategic as we can at identifying uh, who that is and, and, and go from there. All right. We're visiting now with Chris Colvin, who is the commissioner for Conference Carolinas. A lot of alliteration there, too. I'm sure you, you see that on a regular basis. It's been a good year for the conference. Some individual champions, uh, Hicks and Baugh from Montevallo uh, winning uh, 133 weight in, in men's wrestling. Uh, Hunsberger from Lander, uh, 185 weight. Uh, you also had the Division II Men's Basketball Player of the Year, who we got to visit with here on Midwest Sportsnet, K.J. Jones, who crossed the 3,000-point mark over the course of the year, too. You, I know the teams have done well. You've had some nice individual performers, too. Yeah, Come on. thanks for, for mentioning that. And obviously, you know, I, I would have to also note, you know, you mentioned Lander, you mentioned Montevallo. So in addition to the the what will be 15 going on, 16 full member institutions, Conference Carolina is actually partners with 12 additional institutions as associate members. Uh, both Lander and Montevallo and men's wrestling are examples of that. Um, we've got a handful of sports, man, a handful, but a, a few sports, per, in particular men's wrestling and acrobatics and tumbling, where, where we have a very large sponsorship uh, kind of covering the entire southeast region and really anybody uh, just about that, that's been competing um, in that region has, has, has been members of the conference. And again, we're trying to be strategic about, about what that looks like as well. So we were, we were thrilled to, to have those, uh, those two national championships there. Uh, and, and KJ Jones, I mean, what, what a phenomenal human being, phenomenal basketball player. Um, there was, uh, Emmanuel university, uh, in conjunction, we helped with it in conjunction with a sports media company, uh, in their area produced just, um, an extremely high quality, like 30 for 30 type documentary on KJ uh, that, that, that really captured uh, who he is as a man, kind of talked about his faith, but also talked about in this dynamic of the transfer portal and people transferring now without having to sit out a year as many times essentially as you want. You know, KJ committed to Emmanuel, became a superstar, and had every opportunity in the world to go play, not just at, at, at a D1 school, but we're talking like top 10 in the program, Division I, Power Five institutions, had significant NIL money thrown at him. And he said, no, I made a commitment to Emanuel University. I'm going to stay at Emanuel. I'm going to finish my time at Division Two. And so um, ph phenomenal. Uh, we, we obviously, Division Two wish more of the elite student athletes would, would make that same decision. Uh, but, but KJ just um, represented himself, represented Emmanuel and represented division two with class. Um, he is in the mix right now for opportunities in the NBA. And, and we really wish him the best and, and, and hope that that, that that works out for him, uh, whether it's the draft or free agency or, or the, the, the developmental league. Uh, we believe that he'll have that opportunity to, to do, to do something at that level. Absolutely. Definitely cheering him on in that, that aspect. As a conference, you all recognize teams on point scales as to what they do over the course of the year, not only teams individually, but programs and athletic departments. Uh, UNC Pembroke winning the Joby Hahn Cup for the second consecutive year. Or so they've uh, really taken care of business since they've been in the conference and, and uh, made their presence known. Yeah, I mean, kudos to, to UNC Pembroke, to Athletic Director Dick Christie, and the work that he and his staff have done. You know, they've they've done a they've done a very a, a very remarkable job, and and had a lot of success across the board uh, this year. Uh, we we we've also we had a number of other institutions, uh, you know, make some moves and 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 improve in the in the Han Cup from where they've been before. So I know there's a number of institutions in the conference that are that are thrilled with, with, with where they are. We had a, a brand new winner of what we call the um, Alan Patterson Award, which is the, the um, commissioner of Conference Carolinas prior to myself. It's an award that encompasses um, three different awards, the Han Cup, which is our um, overall competitive success, the uh, Sharp Award, which is a, an academic award, 
and then and then we really have a we, we have a, a pretty prestigious award in the conference that that is a accumulation of, of sportsmanship votes that, that it, teams that receive uh, and that's called the Messick award and so we combine those together for kind of an overall award and for the first time ever converse university won that this past year and they just recently added male men to the institution in the last four years and so uh, i know they were really thrilled to um to, to have the achievement there of of winning that award which encompasses all of that after some success with with adding men's programs as well so kudos to converse unc pembroke um for for both of those awards you you mentioned division two i know that uh you have the opportunity to serve the ncaa division two not just as a commissioner but on national levels as well. Talk about what you do there. Sure, I am uh, just finished my third out of four years on the Division II Championships Committee. Uh, looking forward to this this next year on the Division II Championships Committee. I think it's gonna be uh, a very interesting year. Um, this, I, I actually have the privilege about three years ago to serve on the Implementation Committee, which was uh, you know, implementing some of the things that came out of the Constitution review uh, with with the NCAA a few years ago. One of the ideas that came out of that that is that is really now finally uh, rising to the surface and 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 becoming a, a key priority for the division this coming year is to really analyze the way that Division II uh, brackets its championships. I, I don't anticipate any significant changes in. Um, well, potentially the method at some point, but I don't. But but selections I anticipate will will continue to be done by region. You're going to have to earn your way into the NCAA championship by by being a particularly high level in your region. Regionalization is a big part of Division Two. Most of our regular season competition is done in region, and therefore selections are. are I, I, there's been no talk about changing the selection criteria to not be regionally based. But once the, the field is chosen, there's a lot of momentum in the division right now for can we think about ways to reduce the number of first round conference matchups that occur in the NCAA tournament? Um, and can we create a, a little maybe a better student athlete experience by having student athletes compete against other teams that they maybe have not seen before, but are still in many cases within a drive? Um, and, and et cetera. So the championships committee is going to be working very hard over this next year, coming up with some ideas to present to the membership uh, for the future on different ways that we can bracket uh, the championship. All right, commissioner, when that conversation is able to be had, I really want to visit with you about it right here on Midwest sports net, because I, I the, you're reading my mind on that to the possibility of, of fewer conference matchups in the first round would mm -hmm. I, I i would be on board with that right off the bat just just tell you up front so and that's a fan's perspective definitely i know you all have a lot to do behind the scenes to make mm -hmm. it happen but I, I think that would be really cool you do things that uh, well i mean all conferences have their own things that are that are unique i would sure i'm sure but one of the things that stands out to me you all have developmental championships or, or tournaments, if you will, for some of the athletes that may not be, you know, you're, you're starting five on the basketball team, but they're getting the opportunity to play some more. Talk a little bit about these developmental competitions. Yeah. So again, I, we're, we were the first, I believe still really the only conference in the NCAA doing anything like this. And it really all goes back to what I talked about earlier in our, our the program here where our number one goal is to help our institutions use intercollegiate athletics to fulfill their missions. Well, we have a lot of institutions in Conference Carolinas that in select sports have uh, very big rosters. Uh, in some cases, they have established, even during the regular season, a whole separate team that practices and plays games that um, are, are the, you know, it's men's basketball and it's Erskine College or it's Belmont Abbey, but they're not playing the varsity schedule. They're playing a different schedule. Um, and in other cases, we have teams with just really big rosters and there's kids on the bench that are just not getting playing time. And so these institutions during the regular season are trying to find ways for these student athletes to compete. Um, but in, in a normal environment, the student athletes are not getting the same championship experience that their peers are 
Um, and quite frankly, there's there's I, I don't have the data to be honest to support it, but but I would it makes sense logically and anecdotally. Retention is not always easy among the those those developmental or JV or whatever whatever you, uh, different institutions may call them. So a number of years ago, uh, we worked with our board and actually put it into our bylaws that we will hold a developmental championship for any sport in which at least four institutions de uh, declare an intention to participate and ultimately are able to participate. We have to have four institutions to, to compete in that event for us to do it. Uh, and these are typically one day events if the numbers are small or they're maybe a two stage one day event where their teams will play, group of teams will play each other regionally one particular Monday and then the next Monday they'll meet for a championship. Um, they're all hosted by institutions, whereas a lot of our varsity championships are hosted at neutral sites. So, you know, it, it's it, we ask our institutions that are hosting those, like we want to at least treat this like a varsity regular season contest because it's, it's not even always the case when they play um, uh, one of the games they're going to play during the year. They may not always have a PA announcer and scoreboard and probably have the scoreboard may not have PA announcer and starting lineup and and different things like that. So we try to do that. And uh, we've had a lot of success with it. We've we've done uh, a handful of sports every year. We've done men's basketball every year. We've done baseball every year. We've done men's soccer every year. And then we have had women's soccer and women's basketball developmental championships. Uh, there's a, a decent chance we may have a women's volleyball one this coming year. We have done uh, men's wrestling and men's volleyball as well. And so, it, it, again, it, it's it's the experience of coming alongside our institutions and trying to provide that that additional experience that will hopefully help retain the students and will help provide, you know, a great student athlete experience there. Um, and I tell you what, the celebrations that I see in some of those developmental championships are as wild and exciting as what you see at the varsity level. I mean, there are, you know, Mob mobbing each other on the pitcher's mound after they win baseball, throwing everything up in the air after soccer and celebrating and running around the field. I mean, these kids take it seriously, and it's it, and it's important to them, and and therefore we we think it's an important thing that we do. Rightfully so. I'm totally on board with that. I think that is fantastic. That's a unique thing. Let me ask you then, on a personal level, is there anything that you know somebody, whether it be work related or or your your own personal habits, uh, what you do at, you know, just uh, uh, when the when the uh, the office hours are, are closed, is, you, is there anything that you do that someone might look at and go, wow, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know if a conference commissioner might do that. Uh, well, I have uh, four kids age 10, 11, 12, 13. And so when I say that to somebody, <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Um, three of those are biological. And and, um, and so it is uh, it, it's a wild uh, time with uh, kids ranging from fifth grade to ninth grade and um, and everything that, that goes along with that. So I, I'd say when I'm not working, I've got my hands full at home. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and this comes from someone who has five kids. So I, 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 I'm I with you on that. Maybe not quite that stair step, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but that's, I understand it. Well, Commissioner, we are wrapping up Commissioner's Week, and I'm very thankful that you've taken time for me today. So as I've had all the previous commissioners do, can you give me a commercial and let uh, let us know for any student athletes or families that may have to be watching why they should come and participate in an institution that's part of Conference Carolinas? Sure. So I'd, I'd say you know, the institutions in Conference Carolinas, uh, for the most part, are um, our, our, even the public schools are relatively small. It's going to be a, an experience where um, you're not going to be a number. You're going to be uh, known by your institution, by your president, by the administration. Uh, it's, a, it's a conference with institutions that focus on, as I mentioned before, being champions in body, mind, and soul. Um, and as a student athlete, we are going to provide in the conference a ton of opportunities and experience with tremendous conference championship opportunities at neutral sites. If you're not at the varsity level, an opportunity to compete uh, for uh, for developmental championships. And then it's chances are we sponsor the sport that, that you may compete in as we sponsor the most sports of anybody in Division II with uh, 29 and hopefully counting. 
Commissioner Chris Colvin from Conference Carolinas. Thank you, sir, for taking time with us today and for wrapping up Commissioner's Week quite well. I've appreciated that uh, we're ending there with you, and, and thank you again for being with us. As always, we follow the conference, and we will continue to follow Conference Carolinas this coming season. Awesome. Thank you, Joey.